Hi, welcome to Pathology Riddles. Today we will be discussing about those topics which are commonly asked not, not just in essay questions but also in entrance examinations as MCQs. So you need to be thorough with these topics. There obviously will be bouncers but if you know these topics you will at least get 80% of the marks. So let's start with the different chapters. Today I'll be dealing with the general pathology aspect and tomorrow we'll start from neoplasia to the systemic pathology. So in the first chapter that is in the textbooks it's cell injury that's the second chapter in that uh, the most commonly asked questions are apoptosis and necrosis. So under apoptosis you need to know about the definition of apoptosis and the mechanisms especially the mitochondrial mechanism and then also the causes of apoptosis. Under necrosis you need to know the definition of necrosis, the patterns of necrosis, the examples of necrosis and a little about the morphology of a necrotic cell. Sometimes they also ask you what is the difference between the apoptosis and necrosis. At least 10 differences should be ready with you. Other than these questions, in the second chapter they also ask about free radicals. Under the mechanisms of cell injury, free radicals is a very common question. And then we have cellular adaptations where you have to name the hypertrophy, hyperplasia, atrophy, metaplasia and all these should have examples. You should know both the physiological and the pathological examples of each of these. Then we have cellular aging. It's a recent topic but it is also asked in the examination. Other than this, if I have missed out anything, okay, there is intracellular accumulation. Intracellular accumulation uh, means which are all these pigments which are present in the cell. There could be endogenous or there could be exogenous. You need to list out and what is the mechanism by which they remain in the body or remain in the cell. So these are the possible questions that will come from the chapter 2 that is cell injury. Next we go to chapter 3 that is inflammation. Under inflammation first of all you need to know about the cardinal signs of inflammation. After that you need to know about the definition of inflammation. Then there is the vascular events and the cellular events of inflammation. You need to write short notes or essays on these. Then the favorite question of examiners are the chemical mediators of inflammation. Then we also have the healing in it. Under healing and repair, you need to know about healing by first intention and healing by second intention. Sometimes they will ask you the difference in between the two, otherwise they might ask you this for three marks. In that you also need to know about angiogenesis as well as granulation tissue and ulcer. Then we missed out on chronic inflammation. Under chronic inflammation, granuloma is the most common question and usually they ask it in almost all the papers. So that's about inflammation. Next we go to the third chapter that is hemodynamic disorders. In hemodynamic disorders, there are a lot of questions to ask. It's a very small chapter but a very important chapter from the clinical point of view. So we have got edema. You will be asked about the definition of edema, what is transudate, what is exudate. Then they will ask you the different mechanisms of edema where you talk, have to talk about hydrostatic pressure and oncotic pressure and so on. There are around six mechanisms. So you know about one line of each of these and the examples of different types of edema. Next you talk about uh, virtuous triad. This is a very important question. Then we have embolism. You need to know the definition of embolism and the types of embolism. After that you have got infarct, red infarct and white infarct, the differences between the two as well as the definition of infarct. Sometimes they combine this with myocardial infarction also but we will discuss about that question later. Then we have got shock. Under shock you need to know about uh, septic shock pathogenesis, the big flow chart that is there in Robbins. If you write that you usually get full marks if you write it perfectly. And then there is the fate of thrombus. This is one of the favorite three markers or two marker questions in all the MBBS papers. And sometimes they will ask you a short note on antiphospholipid antibody syndrome that is APLA. 
So, these are the possible questions in hemodynamic chapter. Next we go to genetics chapter. In genetics chapter there are very few questions that they ask mostly the Marfan syndrome, the Down syndrome and these are very common questions in the entrance examinations like what is Patau syndrome, what is Fragile X syndrome, what is familial hypercholesterolemia, all those mechanisms of these there are a few mechanisms and uh, there is a picture for each of them. If you just draw that image and write two sentences then you get full marks for it. Then we also have this PCR and FISH, these are the common investigations right now in genetics, it is an upcoming branch so they might ask about this too. Then we go to immune system, immune system is one of the favorites of examiners and amyloidosis is a very favorite question, it can come anywhere in your paper from 15 marks to 5 marks or 6 marks to 2 marks. Then we have got the hypersensitivity reaction in that type 1, type 4 is very important but you need to know the mechanism and examples of each of them. So, they can ask just hypersensitivity disorders where you have to tell about all four. Then we have got SLE, in SLE you need to know the morphology of kidney is the most important part in SLE and a little about SLE all the features and especially those antibodies, anti-nuclear antibodies, those antibodies in SLE can also be a question. Then coming to HIV and AIDS, the mechanism of HIV, you need to know about the mechanism of action of HIV, that full flow chart, if you can draw it very concisely then you will get full marks. And also in HIV you need to know about opportunistic infections and other than that autoimmunity is also an important part of this uh, immunity chapter where you need to know about immunological tolerance. So, these are the possible questions in uh, various chapters and I missed out in the second chapter that they can also ask you about calcification, the difference between dystrophic and metastatic calcification. So, these are the various questions and uh, if you know this much in these chapters you can get at least 80 to 90 percent. So, all the best and I hope you come back for the next video where we will be discussing the other chapters. Hope this is helpful, do write in the comments and do write to me what videos you want and that is all for today. This is Dr. Susan signing out until we meet in the next video.